You're just what I wanted for Christmas. How did you know? <laughs> Do you ever notice that when you give gifts for somebody? Yeah. What do they say when they open it up? Just what I want. Oh, no matter what yeah. the hell it yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. what I always yeah. wanted. Yeah. Gee, yeah. a digital melon baller. <laughs> Silly mood. I'm getting in the holiday spirit now. I'm Johnny Carson with a thought for today. And the thought for today, it is better to give than receive. That's why Congress voted itself a raise before they... <laughs> wow. I can tell this is a Yule crowd. There's an elderly lady over there with a sign on her blouse that says, do not open till Christmas. <laughs> I must tell you, there are no refunds or exchanges on any of these jokes tonight. <laughs> Just take them as they are. <laughs> I want to thank the person, I don't know where they are in the audience, who left the great stocking stuffer in my dressing room, but I'm a married man. I sent her back to the escort service. <laughs> but she stuffed a great pair of stockings. <laughs> a lot of you are out here, I suppose, on vacation, right? Yeah. Okay. Before. I've mentioned it's I've, having lived in the Midwest and lived in New York City and lived out here it's not quite the same out here at the holiday season we don't have any snow and any great change of seasons and kids in Beverly Hills are kind of secluded they don't know the real world kids who live in Beverly Hills they're told that Santa arrives in a Rolls Royce <laughs> with a personalized license plate that says Fatty One <laughs> uh, City of Burbank, where we are broadcasting, is getting ready for Christmas. Christmas is a little different in Burbank. They don't believe in Santa Claus here. They believe in Claude Pepper. <laughs> now, those of you who don't know who Claude Pepper is will have to ask somebody who Claude Pepper is. I've received... Remember you showed me your Christmas card the other day from the yeah. president? I got my Christmas card from the president. Oh, okay. dear. Yep. Raymond Massey never forgets me. <laughs> I miss the Christmases in the East. Out here, people, instead of a Christmas tree, you know what people in California do? They paint the coconuts on their palm trees different, <laughs> different colors to make them think they're ornaments or something. Uh, but this is the time of year that American families exchange gifts as soon as they get them. <laughs> I got something special for you this year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You'll love this. Yeah? Booze on a rope. <laughs> you, you won't even want to turn the water on. You just sit there. And... I did a little shopping today. I went to my favorite department store, Murray's of Fifth Avenue. Uh, that's right. It's, uh, well, they get the same merchandise that they do in, say, they on Rodeo Drive. But Murray's of Fifth Avenue is a little different. You just tell the salesman in the ski mask what you want. <laughs> and he goes out and gets it for you. <laughs> well, the toys this year are so sophisticated. We had some, some new products on last night. If you saw the, the dolls, that, the crazy dolls that sing and they burp. And the one doll that does a little number on a little plastic uh, commode. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Have you seen the new... Dustin Hoffman Tootsie doll. Uh, you wind it up, and it punches out Barbie for wearing the same dress. <laughs> if you watch television commercials this year, just about everything you see in the world is an ideal gift for dad. Yes. No matter what it is. Have you seen it? Yeah. How about this monogram putty knife? <laughs> ideal for dad. Monogram shoe trees. Six pack of Pennzoil. Ideal gift for dad. <laughs> Have you seen the phone company commercials? They're trying to get people to make long distance calls, of course, during the holiday. And there's one with Elkie Summer. Have you seen it? Yeah. Elkie Summer, she says, did you know I could call my Uncle Fritz in Argentina for under $2? Uncle Fritz, move quick. The agents know where you're at. <laughs> Not true. Not true. Not true. Everybody's in the Christmas spirit, even the Ayatollah. Today, he sprayed his beard white and hung his enemies from the gallows with care. This kind of... <laughs> Did you see the Christmas issue of Playboy magazine? 
Did you? Yeah. All right. My favorite part of that magazine, I must admit, is the Playmate data sheet. Have you, do you read that? Their interests and where they were born and, and uh, their turn-offs and turn-ons? This month's centerfold is really in the holiday spirit. Uh, she said her turn-offs were world hunger and split ends. <laughs> They get some deep thinkers, you know. Hi, <laughs> right, I'm Karen. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Campbell's in back. Uh, the Christmas specials will be over, I guess, in about another week. Uh, my favorite special to watch this weekend is the Dean Martin uh, Christmas special, which is always filmed at some exotic location, not more than 15 minutes from uh, Dean's home in Bel Air. Uh, <laughs> Tomorrow they will be doing Dean Martin's Christmas at the Builders Emporium. <laughs> with Dom DeLuise and Ruth Buzzy. It's kind of a warm <laughs> holiday thing. I understand because of the high crime rate, and I, I hope the children are probably in bed now, I can say this. Santa will not be leaving the North Pole this year. Instead, he's giving out a... He's giving out a toll-free number and allows six to eight weeks for delivery. <laughs> Let's see. What I, oh, the president was in the news today. President Reagan just announced today that he would extend the unemployment benefits of the two masked brink robbers if they would just return the 11 million. <laughs> Did you know that we're facing a crisis in this country? Unless there's a compromise between the House and the Senate, the government will be without money? The government of the United States could grind to a halt at midnight tonight. Now, that's the first good news we've had <laughs> so far. <laughs> you think about it, if everybody non-essential in the government had to go home, the only one left would be in the White House would be Nancy's decorator, who's still working on the drapes for the window of vulnerability. <laughs> I knew that joke wasn't going to go too good. <laughs> anyway, we've got a good show for you tonight. We have a, a wonderful young actress, a fascinating gal, Miss Sally Field, is here tonight. Yeah. Also, a, um, a visitor to the. Uh, what? Excuse me. <laughs> that little thing. What side is your appendix on? Right, right on your right side? Oh, good, then I got gas. <laughs> oh, that's okay, just a little gas. And I... Oh, and another fascinating lady. Uh, she is a uh, frequent, not a frequent, but not an infrequent visitor. How would you say? An occasional. An occasional visitor. Uh, Thalassa Caruso, who knows more about things that grow... Uh, well, that's not quite accurate because cows grow. Yeah. Uh, Plants. Plant life. Plant life. Anything that grows out of the ground. Would right. that be correct? That's right. The last Crusoe can tell you more than you, you really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so she is here, and uh, we have some other things for you, and we'll find out what they are in just a moment. Thank you for coming. We'll be back in just. Here is, right, here's a message about a Bell Nomad cordless. You can see one at your Bell phone center. Yes, Ed will be home early, Victoria. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, you were putting me on the other night about... You got a Christmas card from the President of the United States. I didn't put you on. You mentioned well, that I... he had mailed the cards, and I said, I got mine today. That's right. And Mr. DeCordova said, oh, he had one of his. Yes. Right. And we I... thought it was a nicer card than last year, although last year was a really nice All card. All right. Where did your card come to? Came right here. Yes. Came here. Yes. Well, you see, mine, of course, yes. came to my house because he had my address. <laughs> Yours came to occupant in care of NBC. <laughs> I think that the, he has the same address that the IRS has, isn't it? Could be. Anyway. Yeah, you've got your you, card. Yes. It's pretty, isn't it? I suppose you got yours from the ambassador to, uh, to Belgium? 
I did not. No, yeah. not yet. That's right. Probably lost the mail. Yeah. <laughs> mail has been so slow. Bas Ambassador Charles Price, huh? The Belgium sent me a card. Wonderful. Ambassador and Mrs. Price. That's great. Yours is probably lost somewhere. Yeah. That was it? Just those two cards, huh? Well, I haven't gone through all the mail oh, yet. Know. You done all your shopping yet? Not yet. All right. Man sent this to me, and it's legitimate. His name is Lon Thomas. He's from Tempe, Arizona. This was in the Arizona Republic, Wednesday, November the 1st. I thought you could use this in some manner in your monologue. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to show you the clipping to show, make sure right that this is legitimate. Can I get it's a an shot? annual Christmas discount advertised in the Arizona Republic for $144. <laughs> Just Vas in time for New Year's Eve. Vasectomy. $144 annual Christmas discount. Save $101. You must have your consultation on certain days. You must have your surgery between November 9th and 24th. You must pay $144 cash at time of con consultation. Checks not accepted. You must bring this coupon. And it says vasectomy center and gives the address. Now there is a perfect gift for the man who will, who will have nothing. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, boy. I, it's a paper. I don't believe it. Yep. Oh. All right, somebody sent me this. It has nothing to do with Christmas. Remember that old silly question that you can argue about? It's a dumb question. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody is there to hear it, what is the question? Yeah. Does it make a noise? Noise, right. You can't answer that no. because it's... This is from the Comedy Gallery, and I don't know where the Comedy Gallery is, whether it's in, in Los Angeles or where, but a man sent this to me. It says, if a comedian tells a joke in the forest mm -hmm. and nobody laughs, is it still funny? <laughs> that could apply also to a monologue. Or an announcer. That'd be good. That's right. If the chair is empty, <laughs> would the announcer still get paid? <laughs> All of those things are... According to the six photos I have of you at the uh, Motel 6, Never I think I will. <laughs> Where is my lead into the, uh, the Santa Claus bit here? Or not I Santa Claus bit. Snowman. Snowman. Well, it doesn't need a lead in. I... Well, let's see what, let's it, says see what it says. I have one. Good, let's see what it says. Read it to us. It? Yeah, no, no, just, I want to see if it's what I'm going to say. Here is the entire bit. So we want to be sure you understand what this is about. It's dangerous to do one of these things yeah. without... Explain it. So and 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 so. Oh, of course. Yeah. The problem is that back east, as I mentioned before, you get snow. Did I ever tell you the story? It's a true story. It does snow in California occasionally. Very occasionally they get a freaky weather pattern. Years ago when I lived here in the 50s, I lived in Encino. I've told this story before, but it's the absolute truth. And my kids at that time were about... I think Chris was about five, Ricky was about three, Corey was a year and a half. And it snowed in Encino, about an inch of snow here in the valley. It was a, just a cloud, and mm. it just dumped it. And I took the kids out in the yard, and we started to roll it up. And they thought it was hot, because their hands got, yeah. you know, and they, they said, it's hot. They didn't understand it was snow. Mm. So we built a snowman about two feet. Mm. It was very damp snow, because it was going to melt very quickly. And they went back in the house. True story. I haven't told this for years. Car drives up in front of the house. A station wagon. Two guys in the front. One guy gets out, runs up, grabs the snowman, <laughs> puts it on the hood of the car, and they drive off. <laughs> I guess because three blocks away it hadn't Sno snowed, and they saw this snowman. They stole your snowman. And the kids are sitting there. Now, I wanted to call the police. <laughs> And then I said, this is going to be a weird conversation. Yeah. I'd like to report a hot snowman. Yeah. You know, actually took it out of the yard and put it on my car. Anyway. And the police would come. The evidence had melted. It right? was all gone. <laughs> so out here, you can't build a snowman. So at great expense, we have flown in from the east <laughs> a series of snowmen. And what we, the idea of this bit is. <laughs> Do you have a lot of faith in this bit? You must think positively. All right. I mean, this uh, is going to be something hilarious you're trying to tell us. No, we don't say that. We say this possibly <laughs> could, could, be be amu could be amusing. Amusing, all right. Could be amusing and could be one of those, that's interesting type of thing. <laughs> so what we do, we have brought these snowmen and we have kind of envisioned what they might be saying. You got it? In other words, okay. they're captioned snowmen. Okay. Let's go over here and try this. All right. 
Warden, any word for the governor? Uh, from the governor? <laughs> First of all, you see, for this to work effectively, I have to read the card. <laughs> and go, instead of going, <laughs> you must be able to understand what I'm yeah. saying. Hey, Warden, any word from the governor is the correct caption, right. and it doesn't make any difference. Well, we're off to a great start. Never mind that. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> Last time I drive my convertible through Lion Country Safari. <laughs> Out of that. Pretty windy day, eh, Mr. Cosell? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> hey, get pasta, Joe. <laughs> How did you know I live next door to the Diablo Canyon nuclear reactor? What? Ah, I guess you can. I don't think it'd make much difference with this one. Harold, don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> Mild advice. <laughs> you must take the hat off of this one first. All right. The hat off of that one. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to LAX Airport. Would you like to buy a flower? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do all right with the ladies. <laughs> I'm not an animal. I'm a snowman. You have to untie that from the front here. What do you mean I'm schizophrenic, doctor? <laughs> All right. Laugh it up, guys. I bet you didn't think I'd really jump off that ledge, did you? Right, Bob, over here? Yes. Shake those buns, ladies. It's time for the Richard Simmons show. <laughs> Move in. So, way to block the punt. <laughs> Snowman bit. This is not going to work. <laughs> this is not, this is. Want to pass this one? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Damn it, Quasimodo, how many times do I have to tell you ring the bell on the hour? <laughs> you see, I knew. <laughs> Once again, your judgment. Ah, yes. judgment was absolutely right. <laughs> Welcome to Paris. <laughs> Another bad idea from the Pentagon. Dense pack snowmen. <laughs> no, no, no. I have some bad news for you, Miss Tompkins. The penguin died. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Are you sure we started at the right end? Yes, you okay. are. <laughs> hey, lady, keep your dog away from me. <laughs> Lady said, what are you going to do in your Christmas? This is about as christmas as we That's get. It. We don't this, go for big budget stuff. This is our stuff. special. We don't go out and rent families and no. come in with, I'd like you to meet my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> All here at the hearth. What? We're going to do a commercial. Well, of course we're going to do a commercial, Fred. What? 
I know we have to. Soon, soon, like now. Okay. Sally Field is here tonight. The Lassa Crusoe is here. We'll be back in a moment. My first guest tonight. Thank you very much. Here's a wonderful act. Did Sally Field, did she play Gidget? I think so, yeah. I didn't know she played. I thought she was in The Flying Nun. She was, too. What was, her well. name? What was her name in The Flying Nun? Mrs. Nunn. Mrs. Nunn. Oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, it says here she... I don't know if she played Gidget. Uh, but then she went on from that to her Academy Award-winning role in Norma Ray. She's a wonderful actress, currently starring in a romantic comedy called Kiss Me Goodbye. Why did I say it that way? <laughs> You're starting to go. You're why just is there running? To why do I edge. say kiss me goodbye? <laughs> Would you welcome Sally Field? Well, come on. You really well, brought me a Christmas. gift? it's Christmas. Well, it is, I wanted but... to bring you a gift. Well, I... Forgot. Well, wait till you open it. I, Maybe I didn't won't... get anything for you. Well, that's true. A digital John. melon baller. <laughs> you want me to open this? Yes, I want you to open it. And everyone can use it here. Do you want for you too, footstool? Ed. Yes, please. Would you like I'm a little sort of footstool? Footstool here. coming out. Coming out? Thank you. There you, you are. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Oh! <laughs> You don't save the paper and all that sort of stuff? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> My mother has wrappings from 1928. <laughs> and a mason jar. You save mason jars. Put it in a mason jar. Yeah. Excuse me, folks. I know Just that you probably have talk better... Talk amongst yourselves. Watch me open the present. Did you buy this yourself now? Yes, I now? did. I bought it today from this nice little shop in the uh, valley. Oh, uh, it's old. <laughs> it's... Oh, oh, oh. It goes on forever. <laughs> The House of Marital Aids. <laughs> no, no, no. Story no, no. of my life. <laughs> now, you see, John, I figure it's time that you would just acted yourself out here. I see the show, and you're always, oh. let's face it, surreptitiously smoking a cigarette. What are you talking about? The, now, look, the camera comes back on after commercial, and you're, you have your head under the desk. I, <laughs> I figure it's time to just be yourself and, and kind of... Let it all well, should... hang out. What do I do here? You push this button, and nothing happens. <laughs> Wait a second here. Hold on. Come on, you little critter. You can do it. Is there an, ex <laughs> is there an exchange on this? Like a... Oh, did it? <laughs> Gee, it worked so well this afternoon. <laughs> this is a little like the snowman gags, wasn't it? Probably forgot to, to wind no, they it up. Did it? Is it too wound? I'm too wound. <laughs> there we are. Okay, well, that's cute. On to the next gag. It, well, anyway, look, it's it plays. A, it plays a tune. It plays a music. And, and a yeah. dog comes out with a little cigarette in it. You're kidding. Mouth. No, it's really adorable. It's cute but and first. wonderful. Oh. What? But first. But first. Oh well, we'll fix it while you're gone. This is one gone. of the big sellers in the country. This <laughs> we'll be right back that's after this. Easy. Thank you for this beautiful gift. Oh. <laughs> we'll take the toy back and get it fixed. Oh, We're talking God. with Sally Field. So this, this is not indicative of You know, something. this is one time I can say, gee, I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> which is normally the case when you have a guest here, because I saw you Monday night yes. at a dinner for Frank Price, the chairman yes. of Columbia, and the next night the uh, Women's Guild of Cedar sinai Ed emceed the show, and I happened to be on it. I saw you there the next I night was there. Again. I know it. I know it everywhere. I'm very tired. Really? I don't do that. Are you rather private? Don't go to many things? Or? Well, not on purpose, I don't think. It just sort of turns out that way. Did you notice that we didn't, I didn't come up and talk to you much because I said, you're going to be a guest on the show, and I figured if we start talking, We'd, we won't have anything to talk about. You think with that limited? come on the show. Well, no, but I didn't want to... Whatever <laughs> it was, we might Two, three minutes, and that's it, huh? Yeah. What would you like to talk about? Anything. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, Gee, I, I had such a great, cute little well, thing. I Everything I, I do sort of... Is, well, you know, I was I actually I was thinking, uh, what what would I like to talk about? I've been promoting my movie, Kiss right. Me Goodbye, and I realized as I look at you know what, like I talk on the morning shows and all right. of that, and I and I or at the Frag Price dinner the other right. night, I I got up and I said something, you know, I was very nervous. Two thousand people very quickly and sat you were down. Very sweet though. Th that's it. You see, 
What's I that? am always very sweet and I get nauseous. I just thought, I'm really sick of this, talking to, you know, David Hartman and, I, and he's very sweet and I'm very sweet and I talk about the carpool and, Johnny, I want to talk about doing it. <laughs> I mean, let's get down to it. I'm tired of this sweetness. David Hartman would go, oh. <laughs> Well, we were on a little later at night. I, I, yeah, it's I assume late you at mean night. when you say doing it. I mean it. <laughs> I want to know. Tell me. We're, it's, a, it's on all of our minds, let's face it. I mean, <laughs> when was the first time for you? And how was it? <laughs> you don't uh, have to name names. No, I wouldn't. Even now, I would. <laughs> It was many years ago. I was a late, I was a late bloomer. How old were you? How, how old was I? Yeah. I was 17. I was 17. You were 17? Yes, I was a senior in high school. Now, the kids would nowadays go, hey, you're kidding. Uh, yeah, but uh, it wasn't very wasn't exciting. Very good? No, it was... Uh, Why not? Because I wasn't very skilled at it. Oh. And I really didn't know uh, how to do it. Uh, or what, what you were supposed to do. Um, I didn't have any sex education classes. You know, uh -huh. I had hygiene. Remember that? You took hygiene. And I knew how frogs did. <laughs> uh, but they have four legs, and it's a whole different uh, thing. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of... She, she wasn't too thrilled either, huh? I don't think so, no. Didn't see each other again? Oh, yeah, yeah. You dated for three years after that. Oh, no, I was a senior, and then I went to quickly uh, graduate from high school. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't, no, not very good. How about you, since you brought this subject up? Oh, me? Oh, gee, well... Um, sure, sure. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's see. Actually, let, hmm, yes, this is a nighttime show. Let's, we can just talk about it. Sure. It was rotten. <laughs> it was really, it took me, I think I got over that very experience last week sometime. I mean, that, it was terrible. It's a bad... Yeah. No I'm one, no one told ask. me you had to take your clothes off, number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was preferable. I mean, or oh. any garments whatsoever. Oh. I mean, let's just go on. I had carpool in the mornings. You want to hear about that? Uh, yes, let's get, uh, let's get off of that because, uh, how old were you? How old was I? Yeah. Oh, God. Really? Yeah. Oh, gee. Well, I hope my grandmother's not listening. I, this is not good for kids to hear. Today. No, it's really not. I was uh, 31. <laughs> you want to know really? You brought it up. I know it. I'm, and I'm red in the face. I'm color of my dress. I was actually much too young. I was um, 14. <laughs> 14? Cheerleader. I thought it would. You know, one could tell. Well, sis, boom, ba, wah. Now, I bet you never even put down your pom poms, did you? That was the problem. That's the problem. Well, another revelation here, folks, from late night television. Well, well uh, I've got to think. I've got to. Yeah, it was much too. Think young. this over and do a, a little break here. Then we're going to be. You have a film clip of this. Uh... Of that? No, no, no. <laughs> Let's talk about your picture. Oh, please, Kiss Me Goodbye, yes. obviously, is a romantic picture. Yes, uh, it's, picture, a, it's romantic a romantic comedy. comedy. It's very funny. You Do know, you find it more difficult? This may sound like a stock question, but I'm serious. You played uh, Norma Ray, which is a, a gutsy part. Uh, Do you find it more difficult to play comedy than to straight drama? Actually, I know you've heard this answer before, yeah. but yes, I yeah. do. It, it, especially in this one, because it, it's like a... Um, those old screwball comedies where right. it, it's very high comedy and yet I wanted it to be about something and right. have a basis of reality. And so you have to constantly keep weighing that, that reality and high comedy can't lose either one. And how much so the I audience will difficult. buy from you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially in this one, there's kind of a, well, it's not really a gimmick, but the, it's, it's, a, it's kind of got a twist to it. And that is, um, oh, actually, I love doing this because I would love to have this happen to me. It's, um, there's a man who's totally in love with me and will, who's attractive and funny and terrific and will do anything to keep me. And then there's an ex-lover in my life who is attractive and wonderful and is in love with me and do anything to keep me. The only problem is that the ex-husband is dead. And no one can see him but me. Ah, uh -huh. so you can have that fantasy. And yeah. In the yeah. comparison with your current... Well, he's there in the room. 
Oh, I, I mean, see. He's there. It's a triangle. To me, he's there. A dead menage a trois? <laughs> That's a new, uh... Well... Something new. I don't know. He doesn't look dead. It's Jimmy Kahn. He looks alive to me. But he's your former husband. He's my ex-husband. Ex-husband. Who's dead? Who's dead? Ah, and, and who's uh, your current? Jeff Bridges, ah. who's very much alive. And uh, it's just... It was a lot of fun. All right, we have a film clip here. Yes. Let's take a look at it. Now that you know what it's about, I think. Well, yeah. Yeah. What kind of response? <laughs> listen to me. There's something I've got to tell you, and I want you to listen very, very carefully. Okay. Oh, okay. I want to hear this, darling. Just oh. a minute. Move on. Ah. Rupert, I have something to tell you, and it's going to change our entire relationship. Oh, God. Are you listening? I'm listening. There's a ghost in this house. There is where? You where? can't see him. There's a ghost. Right here, in this room with us now. Are you having your period? <laughs> no, I'm not having my period. Women don't go around seeing ghosts when they have their period. You believe that he has said this to me? God, that's exactly what I would expect a man to say. I am a man, Well, you Kay. don't have well, to go around thinking like one, do you? I can't believe it. I'm trying as hard as I can. He's not listening Wait, to me. Wait, darling, just try the rational approach. Okay. I mean, he is a scientist, All right. He? He's a scientist. Okay, all right. <sighs> Rupert, I know what you're thinking, but please try to listen to me. I'm listening, Kay. All right. What, what I see, what, I, what I've been seeing for the past few days is not a, 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 a figment of my imagination. It is not just a memory or an illusion. It is a real and substantial manifestation of a person who is no longer living. Bravo. Oh, that's okay. great. That's fantastic, Thanks. darling. Oh, good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny switch. A funny idea. That is a... That's a good switch. That's a funny idea. Yeah. It's I'm not going to ask movie. you how it turns out. Oh, I won't tell. Call Kiss Me Goodbye. Is that open yet? Uh, it opens, I think, on the 22nd. Okay. Um, which is, it's a difficult time right now. There's so many movies out. It's, yeah. it's like, I, I feel like I should go door to door and yeah. say, I have a movie, I have a movie oh, too. People want to be cheered up, though. Looks like it's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay. We're going to take a break. Thalassa Crusoe is with us tonight. You're going to teach us how to grow fun. My next guest has been with us on occasion. She's a fascinating lady. She is an expert with almost anything that grows out of the ground, and she used to have her own syndicated television series. Would you welcome Thalassa Crusoe? Climax. No, 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 no. How old were you when you had your first plant? <laughs> Just teasing, of course. Naturally. You're going to tell us uh, how to handle our Christmas tea and decorate. Uh, where did Christmas trees start? That obviously did not start that custom in this country. Well, they didn't. Christmas trees didn't start. It's a very old pagan custom. Yeah. Uh, it, it, if I have to sort of go around a little mystic on you, it goes back an immense distance. Yeah. Uh, because this is the time of the shortest day of the year. That's true, the 24th. And 25. so, and all the same all over the northern world, and if you were a very primitive person, you wondered whether the sun was ever going to come up again. And to reinforce your feelings, apparently, I, I would have felt like that a bit, I think, yeah. uh, you took something that was still obviously alive. Right. Like evergreens, boughs, and things, and you brought them inside. Oh, kind of a... Nobody knows it really started, but the Norsemen were... Very big on it. Yeah. They, they put them in, uh, brought in the greens and put them in their long houses, and they talk about it in the sagas. Yeah. And it was much older than that. Didn't they used to decorate Christmas trees with candles, lighted candles? Oh, I was can't enormously that. later. That oh, was, it was. Uh, uh, yes, that came down, uh, there was a German custom. It came in through the sort of the, through the Germanic tribes and came right. down there. And uh, Christmas trees, do uh, uh, you know who brought them into England? No. No. <laughs> they came in with Prince Albert, Prince Consort, when he married that. Queen Victoria. And they were little trees that stood on tables. Uh -huh. You must have seen those uh, sure. uh, prints of them, with a cloth on the table and the tree and children in little flappy dresses dancing around the tree. And they had little tin uh, candle clips that clipped on the ends of the boughs. Right. With uh, tiny little wax candles, yeah. just like the candles you put on a birthday cake. Didn't that burn up the tree? 
Well, not the best families, but against that... <laughs> I, as a little girl, immensely older than anybody else here, uh, wore that kind of fluffy skirt, and my mother never would allow me to go near the tree uh. when it was lit. I always had to stand in the back of the room. And Can't... in England, you don't have a star on the tree. On the very top of the tree, you have uh, an angel or else the fairy queen or something of that sort. And pushy little girls whose mothers allowed them to get near the tree always get the doll. I never ah. did. The great sorrow of my Should life. Should we go over to our tree? Yes. Okay. <laughs> God, I was afraid you were going to say no. <laughs> Let's don't go to the tree. Oh, well, on, here we are at the Christmas tree desk. <laughs> Some people like it small. <laughs> not me, not me. Okay. Don't do that again. I'm sorry. I haven't gone into my introduction. Oh. You have hours for yours. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, the trouble about, do you know what the trouble about Christmas trees that we buy are? That you no. really look, take that one away, Certainly. would you please? <laughs> Thank you. That look like this. Well, that's a ratty looking tree. That's a ratty looking tree. It's not full, it's not... Uh... Yeah, but you know, poor old thing, why it's a ratty looking tree? Why is that? Because it's probably been cut well, around about early October. Ah, oh, then... They're, the need, then the they're harvesting, you should pull them down like that. <laughs> so to make sure the needles don't fall off. Nervous pre type. Premature. Just to make the needles don't fall off. Now, take a look at it. Uh -huh. Look at that. A miserable looking object. It certainly is. So let's bring up your nice bush here, one. Right over. Yeah. Now, there's a tree. We're talking tree now. <laughs> how, would you, how would you keep that in good condition? How would you show it, Johnny? Well, I'll tell you what I'd do. First of all, I would cut off part of the bottom. Why? Well, so I'd put it in water. Oh, well, very fine. But I, why, why do you think it needs cutting? Well, because this seals, the, the bottom, the, the sap seals it, and if you make a new cut here, the water can go up into the branches. <laughs> Well, that's that. Isn't that true? Yeah, poisonously true. I hope I can catch you on a couple of hours. Cut off. The, would it be nice enough to cut that? Well, I was right for a change. No, 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 no. <laughs> you cut it with a saw, please. All right, sure. Fine. Straight across. Straight across. <laughs> no, sir. All right, go ahead. What do you get for a hungry man? <laughs> Started. There you are. Yeah, there. Oh, Dash, I brought some nice white gloves to the wall forgot. No, ain't it, Wall? <laughs> don't? Three minutes we have. Yeah, well, now, what you don't need to do, you'll cut that extremely badly. What you don't need to do now is put that in. Are you. Drop that in there for a moment. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, let me talk. Yeah. <laughs> don't you think that's a little oversized for the tree? <laughs> You really need something this big? He's left me something to ask him. Uh, do you know what kind of water you'd put in? A distilled. <laughs> no. Uh, <Florida>. Perrier. <laughs> hot. I don't know. Hot, hot water? Why hot water? Because hot, it takes up much more hot water faster than no, it does. That I didn't know. Good. And... <laughs> That's fine, and there is, now it'll go on sucking the water up all through Christmas, and you have to, you, you have to go on putting it in once, won't do any good. You add more hot water. Yeah, but there's an old sort of st old fairy tale, I believe, but you can try it, I've never done it myself, but it's said to keep the things much greener if you mix some sugar in that, make it like a sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. And okay. then what do you do when Christmas is over? Uh, wait for New Year's. <laughs> I thought you were going to say recover from your hangout. What do you want from me, Luther? I'm not Luther Burbank. This is your, this is your specialty. Well, what do you do? A, well, you, Christmas is over. You get rid of the tree. No, you don't. You don't get rid of the tree. You do not trash the tree. 
It Why has not? it well because it has all kinds of other uses. Yeah. And that's very I mean that binge little object's not expensive, but most trees How are. How long do you think expensive. it'll be before the bus gets here? <laughs> You're Why don't you using me, but you're only a guest. Why don't now, you get rid of it? Because you can do all kinds of things with it. What? Well, if you don't live in California and you're having your garden frozen, you cut off the boughs and you put them on the flower beds. Oh. And that uh, acts as a mulch. mulch. You also can put it out in the garden and uh, tie some suet on it. Mm -hmm. You tie it to a, a for the birds. For the birds. For the birds. And you also can use a tie the three together to make a teepee. Could and you replant it? Shelter. Could you replant it? Not after you've sawed it. Oh. <laughs> but you can get, uh, you can buy living Christmas trees. You can buy the, come, the, come, the kind you know, that come Have you seen the trees out here take. they have that are pink? Yeah, absolutely frightful. Isn't that awful? I was horrified. Should have green Christmas trees, right? Well, certainly, yes. All right, we'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> Thank you for coming. You're wonderful. Have a happy holiday and healthy... Peace and love. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Look John. forward to seeing Kiss Me Goodbye. Have a happy holiday season. Thank you. You too. Yeah. I'm humbled by that applause.